we did invite you to communicate a few things um, as part of the shadow cabinet. We normally have our shadow cabinet meetings on Tuesdays. And then, of course, members go to committees and so on. So there's a couple of things we tend to discuss. And so today we thought we would uh, communicate some of our engagements as the shadow cabinet. There is an impending um, activity of uh, this institution of parliament called regional sittings. Sittings in different parts of the country, in the different regions, starting with northern Uganda, then western Uganda, eastern Uganda, and uh, central. This was communicated some time back by uh, the speaker in the house, saying uh, parliament will now sit in different regions, have particular sittings in different regions of the country. At the time, I did reach out to the speaker asking for clarity about uh, this idea and also asking that it be processed properly through the different channels that we do have as parliament, the business committee, and then especially the parliamentary commission because uh, it has got a pecuniary implication, a financial implication Unfortunately, thus far, that has not happened. And that's the challenge that um, we have had as the Shadow Cabinet because regional sittings are being planned and one, we have not been brought on board. We don't know exactly what's happening. I hear that meetings keep sitting of staff and some MPs. There has been several trips by some committees to go to these different places, planning for the regional sittings. But then some of us do not know what exactly is happening. And we think that that is problem number one. Because for such a critical decision, it's meant to be processed by the Parliamentary Commission, especially because of the financial implication thereon. Then the business committee, which plans the business of the legislature. But none of that has happened. Number two... We understand that about 5 billion shillings is going to be spent on each of these sittings. Not all of them, each of the sittings. The first one being in Guru, then there will be another in Barara, Western Uganda, then there will be another in Bare, in uh, the East, and then another in Central, one of the Central districts. So about 5 billion shillings to be spent on each of these sittings. Why? Because all the members of parliament have got to be transported and then staff of parliament. Because where parliament is, sit, is to sit, you've got to have the members of parliament, you've got to have the staff of parliament and all the other support logistics for parliament to sit for a couple of days. And so members and staff would be moving and spending about a week because the sittings will be two to three days. So they'd go prior and then return after. So expenses to do the transporting all these members of parliament and the staff and then per diem because members and staff have got to find accommodation and so on and so forth. And all the other logistical elements because different activities will be happening. And that explains the about five billion shillings to be spent on each city. We are asking, is this justifiable that you get to spend such an amount of money to have a seating of parliament? Because what do the people really want? If it is Guru, if it is Mbale, if it is Marara, if it is Luero, for example, what do those people really want? Do they want Parliament to just go and sit in a particular place? That now we are sitting in Gulu or we are sitting in Bali. And then we live thereafter. What the people want is whatever we get to sit, especially here, which is designated for us to sit, and you won't have any extra expenses incurred because we are already paid and uh, all the logistics are here. 
that you sit and deliberate on matters that are of concern to the people. So that ultimately, they get to have services. That's what the people want. So it does not make so much sense to say you're going to transport the entire parliament and have a sitting there and then spend a lot of money. Which money could do several things. In Gulu, for example, which is the first place for the regional sittings, I'm sure if you were to ask the ordinary person in Gulu that this 5 billion shillings, which is going to bring MPs and staff, what would you want it to do? Maybe they will be more interested in medicine in Gulu Regional Referral Hospital. They might be more interested in infrastructure being worked on. The same situation for Mbarara, for Mbale, and so on and so forth, as opposed to spending all of this money to transport everybody, MPs, including, of course, ministers, and so on and so forth. Because, again, for a sitting of parliament, the way it normally happens, as you see it, if there to be any invited guests, maybe LC5 chairperson and a few local leaders, they will be in the gallery. And they're not even participating in the proceedings of the sitting of parliament. Because it will be a sitting of parliament. So then what's the real rationale of saying you want us to go and meet in a particular region? Here in parliament and take care of the concerns of the people. And that's why we are bothered. That number one, all of these things are happening secretively. We don't know. The commission is not sitting to discuss these matters. So even I, who leads one side of parliament, I do not have any idea what's happening. It clearly shows you that there is a lot more than meets the eye. And when you hear the figures that are going to be spent, it could even be a lot higher than this. And that's why as you hear some sections of the public saying, maybe this is another ploy to account for money that is being stolen. All of these things the public are speaking. And so we are saying our participation is difficult to justify. We have committees of parliament. And these committees go out and work on behalf of parliament. Why don't we empower committees? Many times committees complain they are not able to go out to the field because that should be the work of committees that now go to this area, interact with the people, establish the issues and concerns, bring a report to parliament here, we discuss it all together. Why don't we empower committees? And that's what I have always been telling the leadership of parliament as opposed to doing it this way. We have got many challenges which people will not understand. Medical interns, for example, are protesting because they are not being deployed. Only a small group are being deployed. And the Minister of Health is saying, the reason we can't deploy all of them is because we don't have resources. Give us more money and we shall deploy all of them. Police officers are complaining and they're saying, we were promised a pay rise. But they're saying we have been duped. We are only getting a very small fraction of that which was promised. Where is the other money that was promised to us? And so on and so forth. Poor service delivery issues, which the general public is concerned about. Will they understand us as parliament when we are spending 5 billion shillings to go to Gulu, to go to Mbale, to go to Mbarada, and in central region? They will not understand because it does not make sense at all. It is wastage. So as shadow cabinet, we have elected that uh, it is problematic for we in the opposition to be part of such an arrangement. Because number one, we have not been brought on board. We are kept in the dark. Things are being done very quietly. We do not know. And then number two, this expenditure is difficult for us to explain to the public, to even the people we represent, to tell them that, you see now, Parliament, which normally sits here, where the chambers are, is going to be transported to another region, to another district, to sit, just to sit. And then we come back. And for that sitting, 5 billion shillings is going to be spent. We cannot explain that to our constituents. It is total wastage. And so we are saying, for this which does not make logical, financial sense, it is a problem. We don't want to be part of issues that have concern. You see, the general public 
has been bashing parliament, and rightly so, because they hear the theft, grand theft that happens in this institution, in different offices, beginning with the top office in this institution. And then you come out and you're doing such a thing, which is not explainable at all. It doesn't make sense. Now look, there might be some people who would be excited ah, that all members of parliament have come to meet in Mbarara, in our area, in Bali, in Gulu, or wherever else. Some people might be excited. But beyond the excitement, then what? Are we not able to sit here and deliberate on issues that are of concern to northern Uganda, to eastern Uganda, to western Uganda, to central Uganda, and then push through to make sure those matters are addressed as opposed to this issue? So that's why we are making it clear to all and sundry we don't want to be part of this unexplained process which we have not been involved in but also which is a very clear wastage and not justifiable at all. So we thought we should communicate this very critical issue because uh, we understand the first sitting is going to be towards the end of this month. That will be in Gulu. Then there will be another in Barara. There will be another in Bali and then Central Region. And we would like for the people to understand because some people might say, but you're members of parliament. Why don't you go and sit and deliberate on behalf of the people that you represent? That's what we want to do. That's what we are here to do. But we are saying this is beyond just representation. It is wastage. We already have a place where we sit at no cost because it is here. So this does not make economic sense even to the people out there. So we wanted it to be clear to the public so that when they don't see us in Gulu, in Barara, in Mbale, it's not because we are just boycotting activities of parliament. We are saying this is wrong. I have written to the speaker several times and I have discussed this even in the public about commission meetings, for example. We should be discussing these matters because if I had sat in a meeting that made this decision, I would say, look, instead of spending 5 billion shillings per sitting, let's meet here. And then we push for the allocation of money for some of the concerns in these regions. That would have been my view. But I'm not invited for these meetings. And as I have since discovered, I'm not the only one not invited to these meetings. The other day we had an engagement and the Prime Minister was also concerned. I was shocked that even her, she's not invited to commission meetings. She said, the Right Honorable Robin Anabanja, that she was last invited for a commission meeting in March of last year. Now, she's been part of the commission longer than myself. While me, I'm saying since January, meetings happen, I'm not invited. For her, she said she was last invited in March of last year. What, what are we hiding? Because the Prime Minister leads one side of Parliament, the leader of the opposition leads one side of Parliament. You're keeping us out of these engagements. What are you hiding? What are you trying to do that you don't want us to know? It's a problem, and um, I'll not keep stop talking about these issues because some people might think, but uh, why do you keep you know, talking about this issue, lamenting about it? Because it's important. I am a member of the commission, not by anyone's wish. I am there, duty-bound, to play a role there as I was delegated to. And so it's important. And uh, I, I really want to continuously make this clarion call that this institution of parliament should, should cease to operate like some informal little structure, like someone's kiosk, because it is not. And that's why we see decisions such as these ones being taken. Now let's go and meet here. We spend this amount of money. Now let's go and do this. Now let's, you know, uh, the other day we saw the speaker donate about a billion shillings to Zambia Hospital. That was a good thing. But how was that decision taken? How about Mulago? How about Chiruddu? How about Gulu Regional Referral Hospital? How about Mbarara Regional Referral Hospital? and so on and so forth. Whenever we are making allocations during the budget process, in our alternative budget, we were saying, look, 
Can we focus more on healthcare? Can we focus more on education? But people are saying, no, let's give money to Rocco and all of these unexplainables. So that's the challenge when things begin to, run, to be run in um, a very informal way. And we are saying no to that informality. So we'll not keep quiet. We'll keep speaking. And um, we want the public to come on board so that this ceases to be just a matter of us as shadow cabinet, as your position. Because it is your money. This five billion shillings that is to be spent for each of these sittings, it is your money. Speak out. And I'm glad of late you have seen young people speaking out. They were protesting the other day peacefully. Speak out. Because this is your money. Our duty is to, to inform you about what's happening. Because maybe if we don't inform you, you wouldn't know. And they'll tell you, ah, no, this is just another normal sitting of parliament. No, you need to know how much is going to be spent on this normal sitting of parliament so that you speak out because this is your money.